Across the world, saunas are rapidly filling up. But should you step into the steam? Today, we're discovering the actual benefits of sauna. We'll talk about what happens to your body, the benefits, and then we'll talk about the potential dangers of sauna bathing. But first, let me tell you something that happened when I was a teenager. I was a fresh-faced 15-year-old lad who had just landed in Stockholm, Sweden, for a visit to my relatives. As we taxied on the runway, I couldn't help but gaze out the window, excited at the sight of snow setting on the tarmac below. My cousin, who was a few years older than me, had a grin on his face as he revealed our plans for the evening when he picked me up. He told me that we'll drop off our bags at home first, and then I should prepare myself for a genuine Swedish experience. I was told to pack some swim trunks, so in my mind I thought we'd be going Swimming. We parked the car and walked through Stockholm's picturesque streets to a local sports center. His enthusiasm only grew. We got changed and then I followed him into the sauna, greeted by the aroma of cedar wood. The heat hit me immediately and as we sat on the wooden benches, I already felt uncomfortable with the intense warmth. There were half a dozen people there, no one was talking, no words were exchanged and it was in a dimly lit room and everyone seemed to be absorbed in their own quiet contemplation. I must have stayed there for about five minutes before I physically had enough. I cooled off in the swimming pool and gave myself time to recalibrate from the furnace that I was just in. I must have waited about 20 minutes before my cousin came out for a break. I had no idea how he managed to stay in there for more than 10 minutes. He just laughed at me. We cooled off and then we went back in. And after the session, we were driving home and he explained to me that the purpose of sauna is not only to improve your physical health, but to improve your mental fortitude as well. Okay, so what is sauna bathing? It's a type of passive heat therapy that's been used for thousands of years. And it's essentially where you sit in these small hot rooms for short amounts of time. There's lots of different types of saunas and they'll vary based on the temperature and the humidity and heating method. But the traditional Finnish kind are where the rooms are wooden and heated by hot rocks. The recommended temperature is usually between 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. There's also infrared saunas, but I won't talk about them now. Okay, so what happens to your body when you go to the sauna? The first thing to mention is that exposure to high temperatures causes stress. And this stress is detected by special receptors in your body. And then your body responds to the stimulus by making adjustments to your cardiovascular system. And this is because you need to circulate more blood through your body to cool ourselves down. So your blood vessels widen, which increases your blood flow, your heart rate goes up and you start sweating. It puts your body to work a bit like exercise does. So what are the key benefits? The first major benefit is that saunas can help you live longer. This idea is backed by studies on a group of middle-aged men in Finland. Over an average follow-up period of 20.7 years, they discovered that those who use the sauna more often, so around four to seven times a week, spending at least 90 minutes each time, had a 50% lower risk of heart problems and overall mortality. Saunas seem to support a longer and healthier life by acting as a gentle stress on the body, making the heart, brain, and immune system work better. The second benefit is protection from neurodegenerative diseases. So in the same study, men who regularly use a sauna, so four to seven times a week, showed a 65% lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And the risk reduction was significant when compared to men who only use a sauna once a week. The third benefit is the potential effects on mental health. Using the sauna has been shown to help alleviate the symptoms of depression. So in a small study of 28 people diagnosed with mild depression, those who had sauna sessions for four weeks showed improvements in depression symptoms, including better appetite and decreased anxiety. The fourth benefit of sauna exposure is the impact it can have on growth hormone secretion. So growth hormone is a key player in lots of processes, including protein synthesis, the immune system, and it's involved in breaking down uh, fats. So this study looked at 17 men and women who spent two one hour sessions in a Finnish sauna for 80 degrees Celsius each day for one week. And they found that after the third day, a 16 fold increase in their growth hormone levels. The next major benefit is the positive impact it can have on your blood pressure. You've probably heard that high blood pressure or hypertension is a bad thing, but why? Hypertension is bad for your health because it puts extra strain on your heart and blood vessels. And over time, this can lead to serious problems. The heart has to work harder to pump blood and the arteries can become damaged. And this damage makes it easier for things like cholesterol and fats to build up in the blood vessels, forming clots and blockages. So when the blood vessels are narrowed or blocked, it can cause heart attacks, strokes, and other heart problems. So controlling your blood pressure is massively important in preventing cardiovascular related events. So in this study, they looked at a cohort of over 1600 men aged 42 to 60 without hypertension at baseline. They then followed these up for an average period of about 25 years. Men who stated they use a sauna two, three times a week showed a 24% reduced risk of developing hypertension. And those who reported using the sauna four to seven times per week had a 46% lower risk of developing hypertension 
compared to the men who only use the sauna once a week. Another benefit is the potential effects on neurogenesis. Experiencing heat stress, similar to what happens during exercise, boosts the production of a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. BDNF is a key molecule involved in plastic changes related to learning and memory. In a study where people immerse their bodies in hot water, BDNF levels went up by 66% after 20 minutes in 42 degrees Celsius water. And even after the immersion, BDNF levels stayed higher for about 15 minutes. The next advantage to going to the sauna has to do with endorphins. Endorphins are the natural feel-good chemicals your body makes. When you're doing something enjoyable, like exercising or laughing, your body releases endorphins, which can make you feel happy and less stressed. There's a specific type of endorphins called beta endorphins. There are proteins produced by the pituitary gland in response to stress and pain. Interestingly, they bind to the same receptors as opioid drugs, which produce pain relieving effects. It's suggested that sauna use causes increases in the level of beta endorphins. And there's other potential benefits to sauna use like reducing inflammation, improving your fitness and heart rate variability, which we can talk about another time. So what are the potential drawbacks of using a sauna? Spending time in a hot sauna can affect men's sperm and fertility temporarily. In a study with a modest sample sample size of 10 men, doing two 15 minute sauna sessions per week for three months led to lower sperm counts and movement. But the good news is, once they stopped using the sauna, these measures went back to normal within six months. So if you're trying to conceive, you might want to avoid frequent sauna visits. Another disadvantage is dehydration and cramps if you're not hydrated properly. When you sweat in the sauna, you not only lose water, but also important minerals like sodium, chloride, potassium, and magnesium, and calcium as well. And this loss of fluid fluids and electrolytes can lead to muscle cramps and fatigue. So to avoid these issues, it's important to drink enough water before and after sauna sessions. Another drawback is having advanced or unstable cardiovascular disease because staying in prolonged periods in the sauna increases the strain in your heart. Also using alcohol while you're in the sauna is a risk because it raises the chances of injury. It can also make your blood pressure drop too much, which is not safe because saunas already lower your blood pressure. So if you're taking blood pressure meds, then going to the sauna might increase the risk of you passing out. Okay, so to end the video, here's five tips for using the sauna. Number one, keep your time in the sauna 20 minutes or less to stay on the safe side. Number two, make sure you're properly hydrated before and after your sessions. Number three, listen to your body. If you feel dizzy or excessively uncomfortable or you have any unusual symptoms, you should head out. Number four, avoid sauna under the influence. Don't go to the sauna if you're under the influence of things like drugs or alcohol. It poses additional risks and compromises your ability to react to heat appropriately. And number five, sauna sessions are generally more comfortable when your stomach's not too full. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Hope you found it useful and interesting. Do you go to the sauna often? Have you noticed any changes or improvements? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.